Hi, it's Jill Moray from the Knitting Channel. Welcome to another live web show. For those of you who didn't get the notice that we're on, it's okay because this will be rebroadcast and then we'll give you plenty of notice next time so we could do something maybe a little more interactive. And welcome to my Google friends out there. This is exciting, at least it is for me. What we're gonna do here is I'm gonna talk about some knitting techniques sometimes. I'm gonna talk about other things. It all has to do with with what we all like as knitters, as artists, fiber and color and texture and everything that really turns us on in the area of art. Anyway, last time we were speaking about mistakes and I got such lovely, lovely responses from you wonderful people out there. Thank you. We spoke about, you have to enjoy the process. And what's a mistake to you? Maybe you don't care. I was saying how I kind of am a perfectionist a little bit about that. There are places where you can make mistakes and who cares and other places like lace where things join up perfectly and, and you kind of have to do some ripping if that happens. Today I want to talk about fiber choices, a new pattern. Now, I live in California now, so I gave a lot of my sweaters away and I'm trying to collect them now that we're doing these shows that I can show you. So when I get this sweater that I am talking about, I'm going to show you. I wanna talk about the fiber of alpaca. Alpaca, which I really love, those funny animals that look like a little like llamas so gentle and their fiber is really beautiful. It's again, it's another thing where they're shorn and everything is carded and spun and, and beautifully presented. Now, the first time I worked with alpaca, excuse me, a oh, live itch there. First time I worked with alpaca, I got the fiber in Alaska. I was visiting my very good friend Yolanda who was living in Anchorage and is now in Michigan and Lake Orion. Hello, Yola. And we just happened to bump into this fiber festival that was happening. Don't you just love that? You show up somewhere and before you know it, there's something that really appeals to you that you just kind of walked into. And we found out about it and it was at this hotel and it was local merchants that had the animals and they would raise them. I mean, this is my dream. Maybe not with alpacas. Well, maybe with alpacas because they're so darn cute where you raise them and then you shear them and then you spin the wool and then you dye it and then you knit. And uh, I feel like Homer Simpson when I do that, you ever see, oh, and he's drooling. To me, that sounds like the ultimate way to live. And people had their own, their own animals that they had shorn and, and they spun. And anyway, this one woman had alpaca. And next time, of course, every time I'm cleaning, I find the, the picture of Benny, the alpaca, Who's, who's wonderful fiber, made a beautiful sweater for me. And of course I couldn't find it now, but I shall, and I shall show it to you. So it was a natural color. One was a brown, a natural brown. One was a natural cream. And she didn't tell me anything about the fiber other than, you know, it was from the animal and then she spun it, et cetera, et cetera. So I chose this pattern, which was, absolutely gorgeous very plain in front stock and net stitch stock and net just beautiful like a raglan seam joined here for the sleeves but what made it so amazing was that the sleeves had a bell that came right to say the middle of your hand and then they laced up with this i know it's fantastic with i use like suede laces gorgeous and the stitch that you used on the neck and on the cuff was very intricate. The kind of thing, if you dropped a stitch, you couldn't just pick it up and finish. You had to pull it out. So you really had to focus. So I finished this sweater. It's st stunning, stunning. I wash it because the alpaca, she hadn't washed it and it was kind of dirty. All this brown stuff came out of it. And what else happened was my sleeve was now down to my knee. I kid you not, this thing stretched the water and I thought, well, maybe when it dries, it'll pull back and it'll be normal. No, no. My, I mean, it looked like that my arms just went down to the floor. And you know when that happens, when you look at something and you realize you have to really pull it out. 
but I had to take out two full finished seams with two huge cuffs with this. So I, I sat, you know, it, it always becomes this existential kind of situation, right? With your knitting sometimes. <sighs> Where I looked at it and I said, okay, is this really worth pulling out the sweater? And I really had to unravel, really rip out the whole sweater. I mean, the whole, um, both sleeves. I couldn't just pull out and then knit down from there because like the stitches were long and weird. It just wouldn't match up. Just wasn't going to work. So I was looking and I was saying, do I really want to do this? And then I thought, you know, I love this pattern. It's so pretty. I'm going to take the sleeves out and I'm going to learn from this and look what happened years later. I'm talking to you about it. So I washed it, I put it back and the sleeves were beautiful and they fit perfectly. And as I said, I'm going to find out who I gave it to, get it back just so I can show you and show you why it was worth taking that out. I mean, this, this sweater is so heavy. Why did I give it away? Because it's so heavy that even in New York, I would put on that and maybe a wrap and I could go out on a very, very heavy winter's day because that's what's great about alpaca. It is just as warm as cashmere, but because the fiber does not contain lanolin, it doesn't attract the dirt. So it stays cleaner. It's much cheaper than, uh, than cashmere. And going between your fingers, here I'll show you. This is some blue, where did I get this? I think I got this in Turkey. So this is a very thin baby alpaca, but it feels so pretty. This was, and you can really see now, this was a sweater that I'm finishing for my sister-in-law. She doesn't know, don't tell her. So you can see that it's, it's just really soft and beautiful. And that sweater, I think I used a, a size nine needle. So a little bigger, a little fluffier, absolutely beautiful. And you'll hear this from me a million times if you hear it once, and that is work with something that feels great going through your hand because it's going to go through for so long. You're going to make thousands of stitches, and it has to feel good when you're holding it. If it's something is not a good fiber, cheap, and you don't enjoy the process, to me, it's all about the process. Again, you'll hear that from me over and over and over again. So the other thing I want to talk about today is knowing which fiber to choose to go with your project. Now, there is a little dress that I made that I showed you last time that is, I use cotton. It's a baby dress and it could be a toddler also. Why would you use cotton for something like that? It's because of the drape. It has a weight to it. If I made that dress in wool, which because I'm a little knitting yenta and I'll always look around if I'm sitting in an audience somewhere at a concert or this was actually, I went to see in New York who wants to be a millionaire and I'm sitting in the audience and you wait when you see those things, you wait for a while. And I was looking around and I saw someone making this dress. Uh, and let me know, because I've spoken about this a couple of times, this wonderful dress that has lace at the bottom and then it's stock and net and then it's ribbed, gorgeous. If you want me to carry that pattern and those materials, I shall. So I saw her making that dress in, in a light wool and I hated to be the knitting downer, but I said, you know, it's gonna puff up. It, I'm sure it'll be beautiful, but it'll be a little puffy if you make it in a good, a really good cotton, a nice um, mercerized cotton it's going to drape and it's going to look so beautiful. And speaking about that, years ago, I made a sweater and I thought, well, wouldn't I look great in a matching skirt? So I took the same wool, okay, you know where this is going, and I made a skirt. It was beautiful and I put it on and I cried. I cried. I did. I cried. I cried because it looked like I was wearing a step into cupcake. The whole thing was puffy. I mean, where there wasn't a bulge, there was a bulge. It was just, I can't even explain it. It was, I took it off. I couldn't even unravel it. I like just threw it out because just looking at that would have given me bad memories. So when you're making something like a skirt, something that, that has some kind of, oh, that you just want to hang beautifully on you. Because sweaters, it's fine. It could sit there. That's why I happen to like like linen and cotton for certain drapes, especially in the summer. 
because of the drape. But if you're doing a skirt, a dress, think about the drape. If you're getting these things in a yarn store, you want to talk to the person there, the expert there about how it's going to look. Or many times there are samples there. Take a look at the sample. See how it looks, the difference between something that needs a nice heavy drape and something that can be light and just kind of puff up. When it comes to the lower half of your body, you want something with a bit of a drape. No matter how thin you are, it's going to look better with a drape. So what do we talk about? Fibers. Think about what feels good when it's going through your hands, what really is fun to work with, because that's all part of it. You know, like when I'm getting ready to go out or to perform or something, and I'm listening to, to Pandora, I make sure, which is just a streaming, a free streaming thing on your, uh, well, on me, uh, it's my iPhone. So for those of you who don't know about it, and there are other streaming services too. It's free and you can actually plug in what kind of music you want. If I'm listening to something that makes me sad, I'm very impressionable and I'm going to feel sad when I'm getting ready to do something fun like speak to you wonderful people. I usually listen to smooth jazz, something that kind of is improvisational because that's what this is and makes me feel good and sort of sets up the stage for me literally about good feelings. The problem is I start thinking about what I'm going to talk about and it's like, no, no, stay in my head because I want to make sure that when I'm with you, I'm telling you the things that I'm thinking about. So I will try to find where that sweater is. One last thing, I did get this back from my brother. I made this years ago and I want to show you because I said I'd give it back to him because he lives in Baltimore and it is cold. So this is something I did and I did and it's another thing I want to talk about. It is, it was a fisherman's type of uh, stitch here. You did a couple, and it's beautiful, isn't it? But what you do is you do like two stitches and then you pull one stitch over, two stitches. Do you think I'm ever going to do this again? No, I will never do this again. And I'm glad that it turned out so nicely. And look, it had this special bottom where you don't even see a bottom because it sort of gets caught underneath and go everything about it is really pretty except my fingers were killing me by the time i was done it hurt i was a pretty new knitter back then so i was just excited to see the sweater come to life but think about that too when you are knitting when you before you start a project look or if you, you see a project in a magazine Try it out with what yarn that you have. See if you like doing the stitch. See if it's fun for you. See if you can really see yourself doing this for hours on end and if it's still fun. Because when you get to the end, if you're just hating it, what is the point? I want you to enjoy the process. I want you to think about your fiber choices and make sure they match your pattern. I want you to just keep enjoying what you're doing and the process and that you knit with an open heart filled with love and gratitude. I'm Jill Moray for the Knitting Channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I'd love to hear your comments. They mean a lot to me and I'll see you soon.